Hello friends, welcome to today's operating system class and in this class we will see the domain of protection that will come under 5th unit and in today's class we will see what is objects and operations of objects and the need to know principle, domain structure and we will see some examples and the system with 3 protection domains then uh, we will see the association between process and domain and finally we will see the types of domains. Domain of protection. Here, our computer system is a collection of processes and objects. First, let us see object. Here, we are having two types of object. First one is hardware object and second one is software objects. So, hardware objects, there are CPU, memory segments, printers, disk and tape drives, etc. All physical components will come under hardware objects. And when come to software objects, all the software that is program components will come under software objects. Here, files, programs, semaphores, and these are some of the example of uh, software objects. Here, each object has unique name. By using the name only, we can identify the objects and the objects are having well-defined and meaningful operations. So, the operations will define the purpose of that objects. Okay, and objects are essentially abstract data type next let us see the operations of objects so based on the objects the operations will be different for example a cpu cpu can only execute some programs and memory segments memory segments we can store the data and the data will be read or write when come to cd rom dvd rom we can only read the data which are stored in that CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. Tape drives can be read, written and rewound. And data files. Data files can be created, opened, read, write, close and deleted. So, these are operations that will be belongs to the data files. When come to program files, we can read, write, execute and delete. So, the program files will be executed, isn't it? So, for a particular purpose, we have created the program file. but for executing this program file, we can use this data file. So, backend data will be stored in data files. And next, let us see this need to know principle. Here, the process should be allowed to access only those resources which are authorized. Okay, the process is allowed to use only the authorized resource to complete its current task. Okay, and here, the need to know principle is very much helpful for limiting the amount of damage, the, uh, that is the hardware damage or the resource damage, a faulty process can cause in the system because the process is allowed to access only the authorized resources. Then if there is any fault access, only this particular resource will get damaged and that will not affect all the other resources. And now let us see some examples here. The process P invokes a procedure A. Okay, A is here. Okay, this is A. Now the process P try to call this particular procedure. Now the procedure should allow only the own variables and the formal parameters. Okay, the formal parameter will be here and the local variables will be declared inside the procedure. Okay, now the process should allow only these variables. Okay. This is uh, first situation and when come to second example, the process P invokes a compiler to compile a particular file. Okay, now the process is going to compile a particular file. Here, the compiler should not be able to access all the files, but the compiler can execute only the file which procedure that is this process is going to given. Okay. That is only well-defined subset of files such as source file, listing file and so on. That is which the file will belongs to this particular process. That only the compiler can execute. That is the file related to be compiled for process P. The compiler may have so many private files but the process should not be able to access all the files. Next, let us see the domain structure. The domain contains the process, the objects and the access rights. Okay, when come to process, 
uh, it operates within the protection domain and which specifies the resources that the process may access. That is, within your domain, we are having so many resources and the process should execute only inside the domain with the given resources. Okay, next, uh, the domain defines the objects and the type of operations which are associated with these objects. And third one is success rights that the ability to execute an operation on that object. Okay, which are, which are the operations should be performed on this object is called as access right. Okay, now let us define this domain with this information. Okay, domain is a collection of access rights, each of which is an ordered pair, ordered pair of domain object and right set, domain object and right set okay so this is the definition of domain let us see example if domain d has access rights of what is this object name object name is file here what are the access right here read and write that means the process executing in the domain can read or write this particular file and it cannot perform other operations on that object. That means the process cannot delete any content in this file. It can only read or write. Okay, this is called as access rights. Let us see another example, a system with three protection domains. Uh, here we are having three domains, domain 1, domain 2 and domain 3. Domain 1 contains three objects, object 1, object 2 and object 3 with the given access rights. Okay, object 1 will be read and write, object 2 should be executed alone and when come to object 3, read and write will be possible in domain 1. Okay, when come to domain 2 and domain 3, object 4 is allowed to print for both domain 2 and domain 3. Okay, and here the object 1 is allowed only read and write in domain 1 but the object 1 is allowed executed in domain 3. Okay. Here, when come to object 2, object 2 is only executed in domain 1, but the right access is uh, given for domain 2. Right. With this information, let us try to associate between the process and the domain. Here we are having two types of association. First one is static and second one is dynamic. Okay, static is constant. That is fixed. That means the set of resources which are available for the process is fixed throughout the lifetime of this process. Okay, these resources will be fixed for this process throughout this process lifetime. When come to dynamic, this is not possible because the dynamic protection is more complicated when compared to static protection. That is, whenever the process required a particular resource and we need to allocate this process that should not be affect the other resources or other process. Hence, the dynamic association is very, very complicated when compared to static association. And next, let us see the types of domains. Uh, here, broadly, we are having three different types of domain. First one is user may be a domain and each process may be a domain and each procedure may be a domain. Okay, first, let us see the user, user domain. Okay, here, the set of objects that can be accessed depend on identity of the user. Okay, when the domain switching will happen, the domain switching will occur once the user log outs the system and another user logs in, then the domain switching will happen. Okay, this is user domain. When come to process domain, the set of objects that can be accessed depend on identity of the process. The object will be accessed identity of the process. Here, when domain switching will happen, that will occur. One process sends the message to another process and it waits for the response. Okay, then the domain switching will be happen. And when come to procedure, a set of objects that can be associated corresponding to local variables defined in that procedure. Okay, this is the procedure domain. And when the domain switching occurs, 
it will occurs when procedure call is made whenever we call a procedure then domain switching may occur right and so far we have seen the domain of protection that will come under fifth unit here we have learned that the objects operations of object the next need to know principle domain structure uh, with two examples and association between process and domain and types of domains and in the next class we will see the access matrix right thank you